Sometimes you take a photo, and sometimes you like that photo, and sometimes you would actually love that photo if it wasn't for some kind of object or element within that photo that you wish was never there to begin with. <sighs> so today I'm gonna teach you how to fix that. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, BMAX. So, I know that a lot of you subscribe to this channel are fully mobile photographers and editors, meaning you take and edit the majority of your photos right on your smartphone. But sometimes, no matter what camera you're using or whether or not you're on desktop or mobile, you have objects or elements within your photo that you wish weren't there. So wouldn't it be cool if there was some kind of way to quickly and easily remove those objects or elements from your photo right on your phone? <laughs> There is. And today I'm gonna teach you how. Today I'm gonna walk you guys through the entire process, how I remove objects or elements from my photos to achieve that clean, minimalistic kind of look my Instagram photos have. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to remove birds, people, telephone poles, planes, pretty much anything you want from your photos right on your phone using an app called Photoshop Fix. Now Photoshop Fix is a free app you can download either on iOS or Android. And you actually do not need an Adobe Creative Cloud membership in order to use the app like you do some of Adobe's other apps. So you can check out those links in the video description box below if you're interested. But back to the tutorial, once you guys have downloaded the Photoshop Fix app to your phone, fire up that app, open that baby up, let's jump right into it and start removing things from our photos. So here we are in the Adobe Photoshop Fix app. Now I'm using an iPhone to use and demo this app. Things might look a little bit different depending on what version of the app you're using and what kind of phone you're using it on, but don't worry. Everything I'm about to show you will be pretty much the same no matter what you're using. And you'll still be able to edit out something within the photo within just a few minutes. So here I have a few different projects that I've been working on within Photoshop Fix. Every time you import a photo into Photoshop Fix, it creates a new project. I'm just gonna open up the most recent one I was working on. Lovely, absolutely lovely photo right here. I really like this photo. And you'll notice we're starting with a pretty simple photograph to begin with. Now the cleaner and less busy your photo is with the fewer number of overall objects and textures in your photo, the better your end results will be when you're removing something from the photo. But you'll probably still be pretty pleasantly surprised with how great of a job this app does at removing objects or elements within your photo regardless of the photo you're using. So let's say in this photo I wanted to remove the birds and the people from this photo to make it seem like I had the beach all to myself. Super easy to do this and we have a a few different tools within this app that can help us pull this off. Let's start by removing the birds up here. You'll want to zoom into the object or element you want to remove and replace and from here you're going to want to select the healing icon on the toolbar. This will present you with several different healing tools as you can see but I almost always start with the spot heal tool to see how the results are going to be using that one first. So you can select spot heal and you notice three additional settings pop up on the left side of the screen here. The first setting is the size of your spot heal brush. The second is the hardness which is basically how feathered your brush stroke is. And the third is an option to show a colored mask where you've applied a spot heal edit to your photo. You'll see these brush options on all of the healing modes we're about to talk about and you can adjust them to suit your needs at any time. But I usually just start by adjusting my brush to be pretty small and I use a somewhat soft hardness. And then for the sake of seeing what my edits are actually doing, I personally turn the spot heal mask off so I won't see that and I'll actually see what the edits are doing. And from here, I zoom in as far as I can until the objects that I want to remove are almost entirely filling up the screen. Then I start by simply brushing over the objects and areas of the photo I want to remove and replace. Boom! It's literally like magic. Now you'll notice sometimes your spot heal brush stroke can cause some weird artifacting. This might be a little hard to see when watching this video on YouTube, but on my phone I can clearly notice a little discoloration where I edited out the birds. This is actually because the bigger your brush stroke, the harder of a time the app has at finding content to replace the original content with, and can sometimes cause lines where you can see where you edited out an object because of different colors, textures, and lighting within your photo. So with smaller objects like these birds right here, with each individual bird being by by itself and isolated. Instead of brushing over all the birds with one big stroke, what I'll usually do is use several small strokes to make this spot heel edit as unnoticeable as possible. And I just do this by tapping and brushing a little bit over each individual bird. And this time around, as you can see, it's much harder, if not impossible, to notice that I did any kind of object removal edit in this photo. So you can practice with strokes or simple taps to see which spot heel method works for you. And as you just saw me do, you could always click the undo button to reset what you've done and to try things over and over again until you get the result that you're happy with. I'm pretty happy with that result. So next up, let's move on to those people walking the beach. And I'm sure these two people are very kind, very nice, but I'm sorry, I don't want them in my photo. 
I want them out. So to remove them, I'll once again zoom in. And from here, we could use the spot heal tool once again, which actually did a really good job. But sometimes in your photo, you'll notice spot heal using the wrong part of your photo to replace your removed objects with. In this case, you could actually select patch after you've already brushed which objects you want to remove with the spot heal brush. And what this tool will allow you to do is actually select another part of the photo to replace your removed part of the photo with. Generally, this is a little bit more difficult to pull off, but it could come in handy on certain photos with certain textures. So it's nice to always have it as a backup option, but it doesn't always work flawlessly. If it doesn't, we have one more object removed removal tool within healing that's super helpful for ultimate control over removing objects from your photos and this one is called clone stamp. Clone stamp essentially allows you to select one area and use it as a brush to paint over the objects you want to remove. All these methods pretty much do the same thing. It's really just a matter of how you want to go about doing it. Clone stamp is pretty much the method giving you the most control and best accuracy in doing so. To use it, you can select the starting point that you're going to want to clone and start stamping or brushing over another part of the photo with the object or element that you want to remove. Now you'll notice if your clone stamp starting area is too close to the objects you want to remove, you'll eventually just end up duplicating those objects you're trying to remove onto another part of the photo, like you see here. Obviously, we don't want to do that, so either selecting a clone stamp starting area further away or using smaller, more specific clone stamp brush strokes will be the key to good clone stamp results. You will want to start practicing and experimenting with the different healing tools to get better at or deciding which tool is best for your needs on your specific photo as it relates to the object or element that you're trying to remove. But with these three different options to choose from, it'll eventually become ridiculously quick and easy to remove pretty much anything from any photo all using nothing more than just your smartphone and it's a pretty neat little trick that I think will come in handy. And it's actually kind of crazy how easy it is removing something from your photo using this method. And I actually do this a lot more than people think. Like if I'm putting up an Instagram story or an Instagram post and I'm editing that photo solely on my smartphone, Chances are there's something in that photo I want to remove and I'll use this method to do so. Speaking of Instagram, you guys could actually check out my Instagram feed at Instagram.com slash or just at BMacadelic on the gram. Check out my feed, hopefully you like what you see, maybe like a few posts, comment something that you like about the photo, maybe shoot me a follow if you feel so inclined. And if you do so, who knows, I might just return the favor like I'm known to do from time to time. Don't forget to leave your thoughts on this object or element removal process on a smartphone in the comment section below. I've actually got a few Instagram stories and feed post I gotta go finish editing up real quick a couple of these are absolute flames meaning they're lit meaning they're straight fire I'll see you guys in my next video flames lit straight fire what other I don't what other adjectives could I use banger these are some Instagram bangers ready for the gram bangers